So at this point, we've got a project, and basically it looks the same for everyone. If you go back to visit site, we've all got this design, which is all pretty boring. It looks the same for everyone. It's gray and white and dark gray. It's all the same. Now, we can change our design in WordPress, and because, remember, everything is in a database, basically behind the scenes, one little thing in the database changes that it says theme equals this, it's going to change to theme equals that. But everything else is going to stay the same. Your blog, content, your pictures, your links, everything's going to stay the same. So let's go, if you're in the if you're in the visit site like me, I'm going to go back to the dashboard. And in the menu, under Appearance, hover over Appearance, and the first item we've got is Themes. Click on Themes there. And the WordPress themes are the design of your site. We've got currently three to choose from, one called 2015, 2014, 2013. If I hover over 2015, for example, it says theme details. If I hover over 14 theme details, activate live preview. Hover over 2013, same thing, activate it or preview it. Let's just go, hover over 2014 and click activate and then visit site. So hover your mouse over 2014 and click activate. It should now tell you the currently active theme is 2014. Visit your site. Question? Oh. You broke the database. Let me check yours in just one moment. So if you switch over here to visit site, now it goes back to this new design. It's got a different style, that sidebar. Explore that a moment. And you'll see you've got this big change. This is a different theme, and it's a different design, and you're seeing at the top, there's our menu bar at the top, about us, blog, contact us, home. On the left side, it's got some other items, it's got this home. So a different design. Interesting. Let's uh, hover over your menu and notice you've also got the shortcut to go back to themes directly. Let's go back to the themes again. We had, uh, oh, well, this is the same way. This is a slightly different way of looking at the same thing. Um, let's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close that. If you get if you get the side panel like me, I don't really deal with it. This is like training wheels, so I'm going to close that. If you get that sidebar, let's go back to the dashboard. Appearance, themes. So in the dashboard, appearance themes. Now it says the active theme is 2014, and these are the inactive ones, 2015. Let's activate and take a look at 2013. So hover over 2013 and click on Activate, and then visit site. So different design. This one's got About, Blog, Contact, Home. So it's up on the top here instead of the top right. So 2015 has their menu on the left side over here. 2014 
had it on the top right and 2013 has it in this strip right here. This one has got a design where it's got a picture at the top there and then this search button and there's home. Leave a reply. I didn't have that on my other ones perhaps and then a footer over here. So this is why I'm gonna give the answer a lot nowadays. Why doesn't my thing do that? It depends on the theme. Depending on your theme, your, your menu may be behaving differently. Depending on your theme, you may have different widgets when we talk about widgets. Depending on your <coughs> theme, something is wrong with your footer. So that's going to be the go-to answer many times. Depends on your theme. And we have three to choose from, but that's not the only ones we have to choose from. Let's go back to Dashboard, Appearance, Themes, and now instead, let's select at the top, Add New. I'm back on the Themes screen, click Add New. And you get this sort of theme marketplace. Featured, popular, latest, and search. But looking here under Featured, there's the new 2016, the 2016 model. There's one called Rolling. There's one called Hotel. Sassy, the funk, Sentio, whatever. Um, if you see one called Hotel, like me, I want to check that out. We have the option to see the preview of it, but I don't think that's as useful as it could be. So I'm going to go through the process. Let's say I like this hotel theme. Uh, I want to use it. So hover over hotel and click install. If you don't see hotel, just pick whatever, but if you see hotel, hover over it and click install. It's going to connect back to the WordPress mothership. It is going to the internet this time. And then it's, you know, it's giving you feedback that you're pre it's preparing it whatever. And then click activate. Don't forget to activate. We're downloading it and installing the theme, but then we have to activate the theme. Click Activate, and then Visit Site. Look at that, so a different design. There's the name of my site, the menu items are over here, there's a sidebar, there's the home section, it's got these beige colors. Question. Exactly, good eye. We had those social media links and they're gone um, because this particular theme might not support that uh, position of the, <coughs> of the menu bars. Let's, let's explore that. We've got a different theme now. Um, I didn't notice it, but that was a good point. Our social media, the social media icons disappeared on the other themes as well. I, it's, it, it's gone here. Let's go back to our menus. Every theme is different in, in, the, in its menu structure. So let's go back to the dashboard menus. My menu structure is still intact, and the menus I created still exist. But now, this particular theme only has one primary menu location. Some might have one, two, three, ten places for you to add your menus. And technically, none of my menus are active on this site. This is very subtle, but look at this. On this bakery, my menu items are About Us, Blog, Contact Us, Home. But wait a minute, I designed it as Home, About Us, Contact, Buy Now, Amazon, and Blog. Because I never specified a menu, it just took all my pages alphabetically. And you forgot about Amazon. So this particular theme, <coughs> clearly, we have not selected any menus. So I've got my main menu selected. At the top here, make sure you've got main menu selected. And at the bottom, I want to say the location of this menu is the primary location. Save it. 
visit site, and now it will obey you. Now it will see that you've got this menu, and it's putting it where you expected it, and with your menu items. So I saved that. I saved it to the primary menu. I visit the site, and then I will see, there we go, home, about us, contact, pay, buy now, and blog. Every time you switch from themes, from theme to theme, you might have to do that one time. If I switch back to, so you don't have to do this, but if I switch over to 2014, It goes back to the defaults. It's alphabetical again. But if I go back to hotel, which I just said a moment ago, it will remember that. There it is. So I never set my menu on 2013. I never set my menu on 2014. That's why it's alphabetical. But I set my menu on 2015 and hotel. It does remember that. So this is something that often happens. You, you set up a new theme and suddenly your menu is all weird. Of course, because it doesn't quite know what you want to do with your existing menu. This particular theme has one location. So all of those little social, the social links, I have to think creatively. What if I create a brand new menu where I have these items and a new link called social? And from social, it's the drop-down menu items of Facebook and Twitter and YouTube. Let's go back to the dashboard. This is a big topic here. Let's go back to the dashboard and look at, uh, look at themes again. Add a new theme. And we were looking under Featured. You can look under Popular. Nearly 2,000 themes to pick from. Latest. What's the latest theme? Because anyone can create a WordPress theme and upload it to make it useful for the world. So apparently, Lead Surf Light is one of the newest ones. Silk, SF Impact. So these are people, you know, someone working for out of their bedroom. These are design studios with a real office. These are people, these are companies giving away themes. <coughs> and I can download, I can use them, I can change them, I can work with them. And this is the whole sort of cottage industry of, of themes, of designs in WordPress. Now, you might have also heard of something known as a premium theme. Premium means it's not free. These here are, are free, but I can go to various other websites and look up premium themes, and I can get a bunch of options for premium themes. And in that case, I can upload a theme. Question? What's that? Well, actually, you're not downloading them to your computer. In this class, yes, because we're working with WAMP. But if this was a real WordPress site, WordPress would be installed on the server. You would click download, and it would install it to your server, so not to your personal computer. How safe are them? Well, that depends on the particular theme you're downloading. You can always get the details of a theme, and people will will um, will review it and comment it and such and then you can decide that way this one hasn't been downloaded very many times or this one's got a lot of negative comments and the like so this honestly could be a failure point in security because if anyone can create a theme anyone can upload a malicious theme but it's up to the people to rate them and comment and report them and such because there's no central authority really anyone can 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 put their theme out there and it will be taken down 
if it's if it's a bad theme, but it's up to the people to say this is a bad theme. It's hacked or whatever. Um, because the three built in are so basic. They're not they're not very interesting looking, they're not very useful for my business, but lead surf might be perfect, but I have to do my due diligence to to see is it a good theme? Is it a safe theme? And so <coughs> you with no artistic ability have the have the option to activate themes and change the look of your site but if i like rolling if i like hotel me and a thousand other people me and ten thousand other people my site might look exactly the same as someone else's we will talk about later that we can customize it and this is when always i'm going to say it depends on the theme the current theme that i have active gave me a new menu item here Omega Child themes, you might get different menu items to customize your theme. The theme authors create the theme, they publish it, you download it, and it's up to the theme author to give you some way to edit your theme. And so if the theme author never made a way for you to change his background color, you might be stuck. Now, not really, because the advanced way is to edit the code. You always have that ability but we're not going to talk about code yet until next month. So if the theme author never gave us the ability to change the color of that text, we have to keep that text. Unless you get advanced next month. So the, the whole theme marketplace that I'm seeing here built into WordPress is very nice, but oftentimes <coughs> you're going to be spending time and money on getting a premium theme. Because these basic themes, these free themes, oftentimes don't have all the best features. Because there's a cottage industry of people creating themes and selling themes. And those themes are the ones that are more powerful or more useful. And so, little digression here, when my company is, is hired by some client to make them a WordPress site, we tell them right away that there are three ways for us to do it. The first way um, is uh, use a free theme and customize it. So the themes that we're seeing here, we download it, we customize it as per the abilities that the author gave us as allowed the programmers of the theme have to give us some way to edit that background color. So that's one level that we can offer the client and that is the most affordable for them. The second level is use a premium theme and highly customize it. And that means edit code. All of these themes are made out of code, and we can edit the code. We understand what all this gibberish means, and we can edit it to make it do something <coughs> that the author never gave us a button for, and we can do that because of the nature of WordPress. So if the author never gave us a way to customize that background color, no problem. We'll go into the code and we'll edit manually. That's level two. But we're starting with oftentimes already with a premium theme, and this premium theme, theme is, a pay, is a fee, usually a one-time fee, to the theme authors, ranging between $5 and $500. There's a huge range. Very average, I often see about $70. One-time fee, $70, to pay for a theme of a theme author, and then we go in and highly customize it, editing code. And that's a little more expensive. Yes. Why do you say you highly customize it? I'm premium theme, but you don't highly customize it. We could do that too, and that will be like 1.5 and a different amount of money. Okay, so it's based on your, your efforts, not the requirement of the theme itself. Okay. Yes, this is, this is what my company would do for a client. Yes. Oh, so that's what you put. Once you buy a premium theme, you could use it on the client for 10 you have to read the license of the theme, and the license might allow that, or it might be $50 a pop, 
$50 for that site, $50 for this site, $50, or $2,000 for as many sites as you want. So every theme is going to have its own details, because it's different people making different themes. Is it going to be able to give us an idea how that information is like WooCommerce or some of the other uh, subscription services out there? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm getting to that in just a moment. Um, the third level is create a custom theme from scratch. So our company can then create from scratch with a blank piece of paper, write all the code for all of the functionality of the site. And that level is the expensive level. And we even tell the client early on, don't even choose three. Yes, we're going to get more money if, if they choose three, but we tell them, don't choose three. Choose three is going to be very expensive for the client, more time consuming. It's not really worth it to them because the, nowadays it's not just your website. Are you on Facebook? Are you on Twitter? What are you doing about blogging? Take all of those $10,000 that you were going to spend on that theme and spend some of it on the theme, spend some of it on social media, spend some of it on Google Ads. <laughs> You know, use your money more efficiently than just getting a theme that does not exist anywhere else in the world. You can take one of these premium themes and customize it so much that it doesn't look like anyone else's. The point of that is, instead of, this is like, do you want to buy a car from the dealer with a few little extra add-ons? Do you want to pay extra for those add-ons that other people are not going to pay for? Or do you want us to build you a car from scratch? And so we tell the client, don't go with that level, go with level two. We're going to sit with the client, browse premium themes, they're going to make decisions and we're going to recommend this and that, then the client is going to pay their $40 to that theme author, and then they're going to pay us to then edit it and customize it. It's like buying a fixer-upper house. You want it for the location, or its history, or its aesthetic, whatever, but then you're going to redo the paint, you're going to redo the kitchen, and all of that. You're not going to redo the foundation and the septic system and all of that, but you're going to redo the more, more of the aesthetics of it. Or are you going to go buy a tract of land, bulldoze it, and start fresh with a house? That's the level three. And level one, you go rent a place. Question? Two languages like English and Japanese or whatever? Yes, that's pretty complicated. We won't be able to talk about it in this class, but if you want to research it, it's, it is something called WordPress multi-site. But it is possible. But it's complicated. Yes? Does your company only use WordPress? We've, we do, we've done and we do WordPress sites, we do Dreamweaver sites, we do Business Catalyst sites. There's many ways to make a site, but this has been the most effective, cost-effective for the client and for us, and full-featured. Uh, but there's many ways to do it. Business Catalyst, Magento, Joomla, Drupal, Wix, Squarespace. Any solution is the right solution if it accomplishes the tasks of the client. When you make a uh, custom theme, is that, are you still working under a WordPress kind of formula, or you, is it just a basically a custom website? It's still under the, the WordPress structure, so that means you're going to need to create HTML, CSS, JavaScript and PHP code. All of those are basically be under the hood of a WordPress site. So once you've mastered all of those, then you can create custom from scratch WordPress themes. Is there an advantage of doing it that way versus just building your website from scratch without the WordPress? Yeah, because you're doing it this way is very advantageous because it's much more powerful. Because when you build it like this, then you can tap into the whole ecosystem of WordPress plugins. So then you add to it a shopping cart, you add to it chat features, you add to it these things that I'm not going to program, but someone else invented and I can attach to my site. Yes? Is there, um, are there any You, um, well, let me answer that question by answering this other thing also. Um, one of the recommendations, well, let me give you a couple recommendations for where to get premium themes. 
Um, one of them is called elegantthemes.com. You can do a search and you can find and you can look up premium WordPress themes for restaurants and you'll get a million results, literally. You then have to read up on which are good ones and that's a deeper discussion we'll have later. But one place that I've dealt with is elegantthemes.com and they're like a design studio that focuses on, uh, on on WordPress themes. They've got 87 themes at the moment for the price of one. You can download those themes. They've got various plugins and various extra features. More than a quarter million customers. Um, the cost of this is $69 per year. You'll get access to all the themes, updates, <coughs> tech support. You won't get you know, the things. $89 gives you more access. $249 one time lifetime fee gives you even more. The Photoshop version, the, the Photoshop assets of the project, not on here. Um, all of that stuff. So you buy a subscription here, they're going to give you tech support to set up the theme and all of that. And notice these prices. Yes. Those are all themes. Yes. Do they have to be WordPress or anything WordPress? WordPress themes have to be WordPress. So you couldn't take a Joomla theme and put it into WordPress. It's just a different language. And even if you create your own theme in Dreamweaver, it has to also adhere to all the specifications of WordPress. That's okay. <laughs> we'll be back to you. They are created with these languages. They're created with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and PHP. All of those huge programming languages all combined together, basically, to behind the scenes to create the design of it, the functionality of it, all of this stuff. Another place that I would recommend is themeforest.net Themeforest is part of the uh, part of the larger Envato marketplace where you could go here to get themes and what's cool here it's not just WordPress themes you can get HTML themes Joomla themes etc you can go and get code and video stock video <coughs> stock audio etc but here under the theme forest subsection, you can say show me WordPress themes, show me HTML themes, etc. And you can search here, so I'm just going to take a quick look under WordPress e-commerce themes just to show you the range of prices to answer the earlier question. So right here, blue it. WordPress theme for spots. All of these features, $59. License for one website. You can go in and check the license to use it on multiple websites. Um, it's uh, going to get rated. You know, you can go in and see people's comments, people's questions. This particular theme author has all of these badges, so you can see they've been selling WordPress themes for three years. They have an exclusive exclusivity. They only sell here. What else? This one has sold. They've made at least $75,000 selling themes. They're legit. They've been around the site. This particular one's got five comments. Not enough votes to give you a good sense of it because it's so new. It was just uh, created today. They're probably in Europe, you know, one day ahead. And all of these features, what does responsive mean? What does this mean? What does that mean? Well, we'll talk about that in detail, but this is the level two that I talk about to clients, and this is what we recommend. We browse some of these premium theme locations because they are also looking at, does the theme have viruses? Does the theme have hacks? And they are a gatekeeper. Um, we browse these themes with the client. We, we say this might be useful because it's got these features and it's got this design. 
and then the client pays the $59 one-time fee, and then we download it, we roll up our sleeves, we set up the WAMP server, we write the code, we edit things, because we want this basic structure, we want some of these functionality, but we would love it so that the background looks like this, and it has these particular buttons, which we can then reprogram. That's level two. In the middle, one and two, we can work with a free theme, we can work with a premium theme, and maybe just work with what the premium theme comes with itself, and the basic built-in customizations. So there's lots of ways to accomplish this. You have to decide. You might be able to get by with the free theme on your, on your website and customize it as allowed, and great, you've got a good site. Or maybe spend 20, 30, 40, 50, 70 dollars to get a more premium theme that has these extra features that the free <coughs> ones don't, and you've got a much better website. And to remind myself, did that answer the question from a little while ago? Yeah, almost. <laughs> um, for, you know, for example, if I want to design a website, I want to Oh yes, yes. Exactly. Good, very good question. I know with Theme Forest, most of the themes come with dummy content. Most of them have a uh, have a way that you can set it up either you know basic or import dummy content, and that's useful because then, honestly, what I have to say here, they always put their best foot forward that this is the best way to use this theme. But when you download it, it's very plain. It's sort of like when you see that food on TV and it looks amazing and you buy it and the hamburger squashed and the pickles are falling out. They make it look amazing in marketing. And the same thing here, I see this over and over on any theme sellers. They make it look the best. But not everyone wants it that particular way, so you have to... Uh, there's often an extra little button that says import dummy content. And then it'll look like the, like the demo. Because some people don't want the demo, they just want the, the project and then I'll customize it. Some people want the demo so that I can work with what, how it can work. I don't believe, uh, I haven't checked them very recently, I don't believe Elegant Themes has that, but I know Theme Forest, most of their themes have dummy content for you to get up and running. Did they ever talk about how fast some of their themes are versus other That's becoming a bigger and bigger issue that these themes are getting pretty complex and they get slower when you use that dummy content because it's showing you every possibility and every feature of the theme. But usually out of the box the themes look, are pretty pretty well optimized and I would also take the time to look at what people's opinions are. I would go here and, and like that one's got you know four, four stars I would go in and I would see well why are people rating it like this? This has got 45 sales, this has got 14 sales, it's got four stars and I can go in, I don't need to buy it before I read this information. I can go in and see what are people saying. People are saying it's slow. People are saying it's hard to set up. So you can get this user feedback somewhere. Just one moment. You can go in and see the ratings, more info. And you'll see when people give comments, they'll be, oh, here we go, comments, 36 comments. So I would go in and I would take the time. It would be great. Pinterest style gallery, thank you for your support. Love it, looking forward to purchasing it. Just one thought, can I translate the site easily? So right here, the, the actual authors are replying to people. Once you've purchased it, you will get more precedence to get your questions answered. So this, this, um, this is, this is great because you're, you pay a little bit and you get more. The free stuff works to a certain degree, but once, once you start paying, you'll figure it out. Money talks. Question? Was, uh, are these um, all like, automatically um, uh, translated to like, mobile phones and iPads? And most of them are nowadays because that's the most important thing, one of the most important things for SEO. But if you're, if you're not sure, look for the keyword responsive. If the website, if the theme is responsive, that basically means it's mobile friendly. 
and that's what we want our websites to be nowadays. Have you ever been to a website on your mobile device and the text is tiny? You have to zoom in. It's not responsive. It's not mobile friendly. It's bad for SEO. In the search engines nowadays, if your website looks weird on a mobile device, it's going to hurt you. Most of these themes nowadays, because the theme authors don't want to be irrelevant, they learn responsive coding, and so there is that one's responsive. And it's kind of hard nowadays not to find a responsive theme, especially when you're going to one of the big marketplaces like Elegant Themes or uh, Theme Forest. There's many more things we could be talking about this, but I want to shift gears and we'll talk about it some more again next time. This is just to think about it that with themes, you can take your existing site and suddenly you've got a brand new site. The same content is, st is still there, but the design changes. And what I want to do is, we've done all this hard work so far today. I don't want to lose this. I don't want to do this again next time. We saw it earlier in the day we had to do that. I want to talk about archiving our site to take it with us so that when we come back next time, we don't have to start over. We will still have to create the database, but that's not so bad. I want to make a copy of my site. Let me give you a handout. All the steps that I'm about to talk about, I have a handout for you. I will make a copy of my site and I will make it available to you next week if you want it. If you couldn't quite get it today, I will make my copy of my site up to this point available for you in our network folder next week. But in the network folder now I've put number four, archiving your site. You can print it after I'm done talking. Um, but if you get a copy of that, we're going to follow these steps. Drag it to your desktop or flash drive and now we're going to look at that file. Let me give you a big overview of what we're about to do, then we'll do it. WordPress is a bunch of files and a database. We cannot just simply drag the folder to our flash drive. It's incomplete. So we would use something like this plugin, which is an extra little mini app that will make all of our thousand files compressed into two little files. Those two little files are the archive of our whole site. And I can take that with me and use it at home, or I can take it with me and when I come back next week, I can resurrect the site and keep working on it. So I've got two sections, archiving it and resurrecting it, redeploying it. So one is that we're going to compress all of our 1,000 files compactly, and next week we're going to then bring it back normally. The way this works is with a plugin. We don't have the plugin installed by default. WordPress doesn't have a very good backup tool built in, unfortunately. Fortunately, there are plugins, there are authors creating plugins that do many, many amazing things, just like themes. There's a cottage industry of people making money off of WordPress themes. There's an industry of people making money off of plugins. There can be free plugins, there can be premium plugins. This one is free, it works really well, I've used it for years. It makes a perfect copy of your site for us so that you can take it home. But for me more advanced, what if I want to move my site from GoDaddy to Bluehost? I need to make sure I copy every file off of GoDaddy to move it to Bluehost. Duplicator will do that. So just following my steps, let's go back to the dashboard. You've got a section called Plugins. We will add a new plugin. Add new plugin. There's a bunch of suggestions. But on the top right, click Search Plugins. We will search for a plugin called Duplicator.
Type it and press enter. You'll get a bunch of results, a bunch of plugins that will purport to duplicate your site, to make a copy of your site. In my case, I've got 1,200 results. Well, how do you know what the good ones are? You've got star ratings, and you've got comments. This has got four stars. I mean, five stars. That must be a great plugin. That one's got another five stars. There's one up here that's also got five stars. This one's only got three stars. But you don't want to just look at the number of stars. You want to look at how many reviews. 981 reviews. Three reviews. 20 reviews. So this one of three reviews, this has got perfect five stars, but only three reviews. Obviously the theme author, his mother, and the cousin gave it five stars. But this one that's got 981, that's perfect. You, don't, you hardly see that. And it's got more than half a million people using it. This one that's got also perfect five stars has only got 300 people using it. Perfect five stars, it's barely cracking a hundred. And remember, WordPress is 25% market share of the world of websites. And this particular plugin that has really good reviews was updated nine months ago. That's not so good. I want it to be updated on a regular basis so that it's secure. If people don't update their software, vulnerabilities could happen. People could figure out how to hack your site. This is another possible way for your site to get hacked. Where's that plugin coming from? Where's that theme coming from? We'll talk about security in more detail, of course. But the theme, the plugin that I want to use is this one right here, Duplicator, from the company Life in the Grid, updated one week ago. Amazing reviews and highly used. And it's compatible with my version of WordPress. So click on Install Now. It's going to connect back to the WordPress mothership. It's going to download it, not to your computer, but to your server. And then unpacking it, installing it, remember to activate it. So click that Activate Plugin button. You can have multiple plugins doing multiple things, but remember to activate the ones that you are really using. And the thing about plugins is that, unfortunately, there's no consensus about, if there is a consensus, no one follows it, of how to have your plugin work on your site. This particular plugin created a brand new menu item, duplicator. Not every plugin will be that nice. Not every plugin will create a new menu item. Sometimes your plugin will tuck itself into settings or tools or maybe even dashboard. When we get to the e-commerce plugin, we will see that since it's a more complex one, it creates multiple items in your menu. But did everyone get then a duplicator menu item, brand new? <coughs> Go ahead and click Packages. Hover over Duplicator and create and click Packages. So let's see my instructions. I searched Duplicator, I installed it, I get a brand new item, Duplicator. Number five, click the Create New tab at the top. You see here, Create New. We're going to create a new archive, a new copy of our site. Because if you leave today without it, you've lost everything. But again, I'm going to make a copy of my work available if you want to start with my project next time. Click Create New. Under Notes, you can add your own note about what's in the Duplicator Archive. This is optional, but there's a spot there for you to write a note. I'm going to write a note because I can make as many backups as I want, and as we go on, we'll see it's very valuable to make backups when you're going to make big changes to your site. In case you mess up your site, you can go back to a backup. And so the notes of this backup are added new theme. What did I do with this site? I added a new theme, edited menu, 
etc., etc., etc. I could give myself a note here to do. Um, add e-commerce plugin. No one will see this except yourself as the administrator. I've got these multiple backups <coughs> and such. I need to manage my backups, so make myself some notes. Don't worry if you didn't type exactly what I wrote. Make yourself your own note, whatever you want. Click Next. It's going to scan your site. Everything seems to be good on my end. If you've got any warnings or errors, I'll help you in a moment. But it's checking the server, checking your site. My site is currently about 22 and a half megabytes. The database itself is about one megabyte. So this is all of the contents of my site. Click Build. Again, if you got a warning or an error, just wait a moment. It's going to look at every single file, every single graphic, everything about your site. And then it'll say Complete. And it actually compressed it down to 9.5 megabytes, so less than half the size. My instructions. In the Scan Complete section, click Build. If your scan failed, read the notes, check tech support. Number 10, after the build is complete, you will get two files, Installer and Archive. Click to download the installer and the archive. One is called installer.php and contains instructions to resurrect your site. The other might be called something with a weird name, .zip, and contains all your media and everything. Do not unzip this file. What I'm saying here is all your site now is two things. The whole site and how to bring it back to life. We're not going to unzip this file. We're not going to double click this file. We're not going to do anything with these files until we read the second part of my handout here, resurrecting the site, which we'll do next week. But what we want to do here is you want to click once to download the installer. If it pops up to ask you open it or save it, click save. Yeah, mine's asking open or save. Click save. I want to also click to download the archive. I want to save it. I'm in Firefox, and when I download something, this little down arrow up here tells me I downloaded something. If you're in Chrome, it looks a little different. But you want to click that download button, and these two files were downloaded. Click the folder to show me where did they end up, because they might have ended up on the desktop. They might have gone into the downloads folder. Who knows where they ended up? But if you click that up open containing folder, it'll take you to the folder. It's on my desktop. I see on my desktop I've got 2016 blah 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 dot zip and installer. Question? Yeah, it's, it's uh, when I try to click on the archive, they ask me if I should open it up because it's in the next Nope, you want to save it. Okay. Yeah, you want to save it. You want to save it. So it downloaded both of these to my desktop. And both of those files are necessary for me to work with next week. Um, my instructions further say, OK, I'm clicking to download them. They've downloaded the files. Move, move the zip file and then that installer.php file to a folder with the date to keep them together. What this is saying is, I'm going to need both of these files. I need a new folder. I need to need, make a new folder to put them both in there. At the top, you have new folder here. And I'm going to call that new folder today's date, 2016-02-17. this folder here of my work for today. I'm going to move the zip file with the little zip folder 
and the installer PHP file. I'm going to move them both. Ladies, if you're going to help each other, please be a little bit quieter. You're kind of distracting. Uh, if you're going to move this to your own uh, to your own folder here, that's going to keep them all together. And then now, I'm going to move that to my flash drive. So all the work that I did today is in that folder. I'm going to drag it from my folder to my flash drive. And so that's a perfect copy of my site. If I want to keep working on it at home, my instructions give us a way to bring it back to life. When we come back next time, we will follow these instructions to get back to this point. I don't want to have to choose my theme again and create my about page again and do the menu and all of that stuff. It's all saved, it's all archived in this pair of files. When we come back together, we'll bring it back to life and we'll, and we'll, get, and we'll continue from this point here as if we're never left off anywhere. Obviously this is a little technical. That's why I've got the instructions. We'll do a little bit of lab time as we wrap up the class. I've got all of this recorded, remember? You can always go back and play the videos. And uh, if you missed anything, watch the videos again. Uh, we're going to end at this point, and we're going to do it again next time.